This week we're going to be going over the cooling system on my TT4 Prep 350Z. Of all the systems on my car, the cooling system is probably the one that is the most complete. This is definitely the one that I have the fewest mods planned in the future. Right now, I'm running a Megan Racing aluminum radiator, a custom coolant swirl pot. I have a complete heater hose delete with a custom block off plate. All the hoses are silicone. I have a Nismo 1.3 bar high pressure radiator cap, a glow shift oil temperature gauge and water temperature gauge, a custom Hayden oil cooler, a custom Hayden transmission cooler. I'm going to do videos on how to make those in the future. I have a custom electric fan, which is really just when the car is completely stopped at red lights to and from the track and sitting in the pits at the track. Other than that, the fan stays off. I also have a Mishimoto low temperature thermostat that was really only put on because of the heater hose delete. It was a little bit difficult to get the thermostat to open properly. It's a little bit difficult to see because everything is black, but you have my oil cooler on the left and the transmission cooler on the right. I have ducting. You can see that there on the side. So both sides, top and bottom, are completely ducted in. It could be a little bit better. The seal could be a little bit tighter just to get a lot better flow. If you can seal this up 100%, it's going to dramatically increase the efficiency of the airflow through the bumper vent and then back out the hood or below the car, depending on how your system is set up. Running on track right now, my transmission temperature will be somewhere right around 200 degrees, my oil temperature will be right around 210, and my water temperature will be right around 185. Really, the water temperature even stays a little bit lower than that unless it's a track day in the summer. I really have no complaints or future plans to change on the coolant system. The only thing I really want to change is I want better ducting into the radiator and ducting out of the radiator. Eventually, I'd like to move the engine back. I've got some extra space where I can slide the engine back probably six to eight inches and still be compliant with NASA's rule of I can't cut the floor pan. Because everything you see there behind the engine, all of that faux fire firewall that's not really a firewall that can come out the real firewall is right under the windshield line just right over here that's where the real firewall is so this is not real and I've got space in between here so by sliding that back I can add some ducting up here to come up and guide all the air out of the radiator and directly out the hood of the car instead of it having the finest way to the hood vent all on its own. Here you can see the two different types of vents I have for my hood. Vents at the front are parts of the hood that are angled up into the airflow so that as air travels over those vents it creates a low pressure area right at that exit so it's going to help pull air out of the hood. You also have the high pressure air that's right in front of the engine. It's getting piled up and it needs somewhere to go so the low pressure right there exiting that vent is going to pull heat out of the engine but like I said I want to add some ducting behind the radiator just to increase the efficiency of that flow. I want all the air that comes into the radiator to go right back out. At the same time, once I have that, I won't need the vent in the back anymore. The vent is the back is for any air that does not make it out those front vents. So not only does this increase cooling efficiency, but it reduces lift and it reduces drag. Other than that extra ducting, there's really nothing I need to change on the car. It's really quite simple. I don't have the heater core. I don't have all the crossover pipes and the and the liquid to liquid oil cooler that the factory had. If you're trying to piece together some extra cooling for your 350Z, I would definitely start with the oil cooler. If you have an automatic, definitely get the transmission cooler. You cannot get an aftermarket radiator that has the factory transmission cooler. So you're going to need that. The radiator for these cars, unless you're going forced induction, it's not going to be a problem. I never had an issue with water temps. The only reason I replaced my radiator is the classic in-tank blues. And if I was going to replace it, I was going to upgrade it. And for those who bash Megan Racing, this thing has been great. The weld quality looks good. I haven't had a single issue out of it. So if you're worried about buying it, don't be. Oh, and one last thing thing I'm running straight water on my coolant system so I do not have any antifreeze in the system it is just water and an additive so I'm using the DEI brand additive but you can use water wetter 
or any number of other additives just to keep you from getting buildup or corrosion in the system from running the straight water. Do not run tap water, you have to run distilled water or you're gonna get all sorts of mineral buildup in your system that you do not want. A lot of tracks require straight water or at least recommend it and you'll get better cooling out of it. So really it's cheaper, you'll get better cooling and it's less dangerous for those around you. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below, hit that subscribe button and I will see you guys next week.